Well, I hope you all are having a good day. We are going to do another well pump test review in the test tank, and I'm gonna show you which pump we're gonna be testing. So we actually just took delivery on a whole crate of uh, three inch Grumpus pumps. But the one I'm gonna test today is right here. This is not one that I stock. I actually ordered this about a year ago for a customer who ended up backing out of the deal. Um, we drilled them like a 600 foot well and we had to sleeve it with four inch slotted sleeve the entire way. So we had to order a special pump for that. Now this is a one horsepower, five gallon a minute SQ360. And I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick this in the test tank just to see how it will perform. Um, our goal is that we've had it on our shelf for about a year and we recently drilled a well for a customer who we're gonna use this pump in his well. His well only makes about a gallon a minute and he's going to use it for livestock. So this well is really only going to run uh, cattle waterers or jugs for like sheep and stuff like that. So that's pretty much all it needs. It's going to go down at 400 foot and we have to order in special black roll pipe uh, to go 400 foot. You have to use 250 PSI poly pipe if you want to go to 400 foot. Uh, typically what we stock is 200 PSI, which is okay for 300 foot. But since this pump has the capability of actually shutting off a pressure switch at 400 feet, which we're going to test that today to make sure it does that, um, we're going to have to have a pipe that can withstand that amount of pressure. Uh, if the water level is drawn all the way down to 400 foot, you're looking at somewhere in the 240 PSI range uh, internally of that pipe. So we want to have pipe that can withstand the uh, amount of pressure that this pump can throw at it. Now, just like all my other well pump test videos, we are going to be monitoring amp draw. We're going to be monitoring maximum PSI. And we're also going to be monitoring flow rate. Now, if we take a look right here, we have 5SQ-360. This is a 5-gallon a minute pump with a maximum head of 401 feet. This pump has 8 stages, 240 volt. We are expecting a run amp draw of 9.3. And the weight of this pump is 14.1 pounds. I love an SQ pump because of just how light it is compared to a typical Franklin 4-inch pump. Um, if we come over here and we refer to the pump chart, you look at the 510 SQ 360, 60 PSI, it will cut it all the way off, providing 1.6 gallons per minute all the way to 400 feet. I believe that was 400 feet. Yes. Okay. So we're going to go ahead now. I'm going to take the stem here and the flow and the gauge we're going to put all of this on the pump and i'm going to drop it in the test tank so now that we have the sq360 sitting in the test tank the first thing that i want to do is i want to monitor the start amp draw so all we have to do is insert the pool disconnect Nice. Nice low amps all the way to the 6.2 mark. Okay. Let's go ahead and journey on around here and see what she's doing. Looks like it's flowing about 5 gallons a minute. Maybe a little bit more. Let's go up here and see what the uh, gallon per minute flow rate says. Alright. It says it is flowing 8.6 gallons per minute. But that is at no head pressure. So let's go ahead, let's talk about what, what I think we're going to get. This pump is capable of shutting off a pressure switch at 400 feet. So that's 173 plus 60. So we're looking at 233 PSI that this thing theoretically should be capable. So I'm going to say that needle should probably be down here somewhere once this thing is closed off a considerable amount. We're going to go ahead now, we're going to knock it back to the 5 gallon a minute flow rate. We're starting to get a little bit of pressure. 
still at seven point. We're still flowing five and a half. Look at that. We're at four point. Give it a little bit more. We're at 120 PSI internally. All right, so we're at five gallons a minute. We're at 100 PSI. Let's see what our amp draw is. Our amp draw is still only 6.4. That's, that's nice and low. Now, five gallons a minute doesn't seem like much, but it takes quite a bit of energy to lift the water from a very deep depth. So that's what these pumps are designed for. These pumps are designed what we call low and slow. It'll bring up water from a very deep depth. And then what you do is you have your large storage tank up top to store all that pressurized water in. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at both the pressure gauge and the flow rate. We're going to cock it back just a little. Oh, wow. We went back one gallon per minute on flow rate and went up 25 PSI. We're going to do a little bit more. It said it would do 400 at 1.6 gallons per minute, and that would be around the 200 PSI range. Be around 220 PSI, really. All right, we're at 1.9 gallons per minute of flow over here. We're at 180 PSI. That is a lot of pressure inside that unit right there. We're gonna come over here and look. We're still only at 6.47 amps. Now this is a one horsepower pump that says the maximum amp draw is supposed to be nine. We're nowhere near that, that's great. Well, let's go ahead and see what we get maximum pressure wise. We are at one gallon per minute of flow and we are almost at 200 PSI. Let's see. I can tell the water coming out of this is actually warmer than the water in the tank. So it's it's putting quite a load on the pump, on the motor. Actually, I can hold on to that motor. It's not hot at all. I'm going to say if the water is the, the temperature of the room, which is 70, I'm going to say that pump is like 90 degrees. Okay. So we have 200 PSI and we have 1.1 gallons per minute right here. So we're already in the 400 foot head range. Let's see how much pressure the SQ360 can actually do. Okay, dead stop. We're looking at probably 220 PSI realistically. And we have a very, very small dribble of water coming out. Not even enough to give me any flow. So theoretically, we're deadheading the pump. Now, these pumps do have an auto shutoff where if it doesn't flow any water, theoretically, it's supposed to shut it off. But I think the pump has to run for a period of time in a no-flow situation before it cuts itself off. But I don't want to go ahead and put that pump through that. Let me go ahead and increase it a little get our gallon per minute flow rate over here going again now we're back to 1.6 1.7 and we're at 190 psi so yes this pump one horsepower grumpus five gallon a minute sq360 is totally capable of pumping from 400 feet no problem at all go ahead and open it back up now one thing I did not check we're gonna go back and do it again Let's get it all the way back to 200 all right we're at 200 PSI and we're at three quarters of a gallon a minute now let's see what our amp draw is now less 6.1 now 
That's what I heard in theory. I heard that when a pump is actually flowing less volume, it pulls less amperage. And that kind of makes sense. It doesn't have, uh, I guess, the strain on the motor to flow the volume. So it's not slowing down the impellers. Even though it is under pressure, I think the pipe is taking all that abuse and it makes the impellers spin freely. I don't, I don't really understand it, but it kind of goes against what logic would stay. But the test shows you less amp draw under more pressure. And that's the argument when people talk about a cycle stop valve that a, a pump will actually pull less amp draw under a situation like this. And this is actually what a cycle stop valve will do. A cycle stop valve will put your system under a significant amount of head pressure in order to control the flow on the other side to where you just have to use a smaller tank. But I don't like cycle stop valves because your drop pipe is always under a considerable amount of pressure compared to a typical bladder tank uh, and pressure switch setup. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open it back up. Goes back to flowing 8.8 .8 gallons per minute. 8.7. And we got it flowing again. Well, that's great. Now, 8.8 .8 gallons per minute. Oh, it shut off on me. All right. Six amps. Wow. It pulls low amps compared to what I thought it would. You see, that's another reason why I like a Grumpus pump. A three inch pump doesn't pull the same amp draw as a four inch pump. So you can get away with a smaller wire gauge because the amp draw is so much lower. So typically on a 400 foot system, depending on the size of the horsepower of your pump, you may have to use number eight or number six wire if you're using a horse and a half pump to bring water up from 400 or 450 foot. Now if you use a one horsepower Grumpus, you can get away with using number 10 wire at 400 foot and if you put a uh, pump at 300 or 350 you can get away with number 12. It, it, it also has the effect of how far is the well from the house all that is into the equation but 95 percent of the time we install our pumps on 12-2 submersible pump wire and then if we have a long run from the well to the house we'll put number 10 wire in the ditch from the switch and the breaker panel all the way out to the well head and then we'll downsize to number 12 going down the well because number 12 is less weight hanging vertically in the well so it's easier to remove it in the future. That's another benefit of the Grumpus pump. It's only 14 pounds where a typical four inch pump is 27, 28, 30 pounds. So it's almost twice as much and it's just that much heavier when you go to remove it in the future. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and we're going to talk about it. So now if we look at the flow chart, this is the pump we used. It's a one horsepower and basically it flowed exactly what these numbers were. If we come over here and we look, we've got one, two, three, four, the, the fourth column, um, 1.6 gallons per minute. If we jump up to the top, we go one, two, three, four, and that's at 460 foot. So if we go over one, uh, that is 400. We go back. My hands are dirty. And we were 3.2 gallons per minute. So we were kind of in the middle of that range. We were uh, we were about 2, 2.2, um, but that was at 200 PSI, um, which would be a little bit deeper than 400 foot. So that's understandable that that says 3.2. But all of these um, flow rates and everything, this is all based off of like typical inch and a quarter. And if you look at my setup, I've reduced everything down to one inch because... I wanted my setup to mimic uh, a residential setup as much as possible. That's why I have a T. That's why I reduced it to one inch. That's why I have all these elbows. I've had people in the comments say, oh, you should just put your flow meter right after the valve. Well, there's a reason why I didn't do that. I wanted to put some 90s in the system because I want it to mimic a residential setup. There's nowhere 
in your system coming from your pump all the way to your house where you don't have elbows. So everybody has elbows and elbows always restrict flow a little bit. So that was the idea behind it. I wanted it to make a sharp bend here, have to curve water up, curve water over, and then curve water down. So that, that was kind of the idea behind putting 90s in the system was to try to be as, you know, close to a residential system as possible to where I could understand, you know, where these pumps actually belong in the well and do they perform as the way that the manufacturer says that they will. And from what I've tested so far and I've seen with Grumpf's pumps, they are smack dab online with what the manufacturer and the factory says that they will do. Even though I don't carry the SQ360 on my website, I do stock the SQ320. So this is basically the sister pump to that, which is just a three-quarter horsepower motor instead of a one horsepower motor, but it still is the same pump end. The reason why I like and I stock the 320 is because the three-quarter horsepower motor being that it is smaller it pulls slightly less amp draw which allows you to use number 12 wire all the way to 400 foot so there is a method to my madness there's no need to carry so many different model pumps i know grump is probably they probably make 25 or 30 different model pumps even though i only stock about six or seven but the ones that I do stock, I install them in my systems that I do for my customers. And that's the only reason why I carry them for you all is I'm not going to sell a product that I do not use myself. So I recently got a huge shipment of pumps in. So I'm all stocked up for anybody who needs anything. Feel free to check out my website. That'll be listed in the description of the video below. And if you enjoyed this video... Please give it a thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Have a good one.